What's up, strongest men, women, and children from blocks all around the world? I am my block strongest man, and today I have a two for one, two great surprises for you. Sam Beliveau and Maxime Boudreau. Welcome to you both. Thank you for having us. Hey. Yeah, thanks for jumping on. This is great. It uh, works out well because we're in the same time zone. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, uh, what I like to do on these interviews is starting off with what I think is kind of the most important part of the whole interview brag about yourselves a little bit and your accomplishments, whoever would like to go first. Awesome. Go, first. go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Um, well, for, I guess went to going to Worlds last year is my first time. Uh, had a national record for a log press for Keane at 440. Uh, my third place at Santa Monica was a good accomplishment as well. And returning to Worlds this year. Awesome. Yeah, and I think um, people got to know you from Worlds last year and then the Shaw Classic, but I think the Arnold Santa Monica is really when you kind of started to get people's attention. Is that fair? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, from what I was reading online, I, I uh, wasn't following at the time, but from what I was reading online, you kind of gave uh, Brian Shaw a little run for his money. I think you uh, won the first three events and were putting a little scare in them. <laughs> I, I lost that show. I just needed to finish our last time back, and I just came a bit short, and it put me from first to third place. Yeah. yeah, it can really, a uh, couple points can really make a big turn, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sam, how about you? Why don't you tell folks who uh, who haven't been following you so far a little bit about you and your accomplishments? Um, yeah, so um, I am a previous, uh, so I started Multiply about four or five years ago, and I've had really good Canadian um, records on there. I have a uh, 606 squat, which would be my best <laughs> lift, um, and a 365 bench. Um, and then from there, I transitioned to strong women, uh, which I finished second in Canada two years ago, um, missing again the po our first spot just by a few points. Um, and then I went to Europe at the Arnold, finished right behind Andrea Thompson, which really uh, kind of put me in the um, world ranking to see what I could really do into the world uh, in the women's pack. And uh, I think I've got really great chances over the next few years to um, put a name up for myself. And I'm also, I have the Canadian uh, log press record in the heavyweights women, which is 234. And then I have a, uh, oh, the Canadian circus dumbbell at 163. And I'm currently chasing that world record um, of 180. But I wanted, I want to set it up, of course, at 185. Yeah, so that's how I became aware of you. I actually talked to Jessica Fifth in a, a couple of months ago, I believe, and uh, this topic came up because both of you are going for that world record. Yes. I believe it's on Clash on the Coast, right? Yes, exactly. I unfortunately won't be able to make it due to crazy COVID restrictions here in Canada, oh. um, but we are trying to get what's here, hopefully, or a live feed, something that we could, I'm still going to be, I'm still prepping for it, so we still gonna, we're still going to do it in the gym, but hopefully we can have it uh, live and uh, I could uh, still go head to head against Jess. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, on one of your most recent posts, you were doing 175 for two. Is that right? Uh, I did a 170 for two singles. Yeah, so you're pretty close. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now that I've had the... So I did go to the Arnold last year with uh, Jess, Donna, and um, Christian. And I obviously was um, attempting that world record. And I fell short. I think there is uh, a few things that came into play um i also only got the invite about what four weeks out so i only had really a month to get ready i also only had a plate loadable dumbbell which makes a huge difference um from a 12 inch plate loadable to that 10 inch rogue dumbbell but that week that i came back from the arnold's i bought that dumbbell and i've been practicing with it since so yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I think Jessica said the same thing. She tried to get a very, you know, as similar a dumbbell as possible to yes. practice on because I think it, you know, really makes a difference. I'm a total uh, amateur here, so I just take a regular dumbbell, put a fat grip on it, and that's how I train. But, uh, you know, it's it's good to learn from <laughs> from the both of you on how to do yeah, it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, and so, uh, Max, we talked a little bit about the Arnold Santa Monica, and then, as we said, kind of at Worlds last year, you started to get everybody's attention. So, uh, talk about your experience there, how you got invited, I think, first of all. So how, how do you get invited to Worlds? Uh, it all depends. So usually the Giants Live is actually a world qualifying tour. So the top three of each shows are invited. 
And then there's wild cards like myself, like because I did good at Santa Monica, so he, he saw me there, so I got invited like that. And the experience over there is way different. It's not like a strong match show. It's mostly like a TV show. You show up there at seven, you're done till seven at night. Like they just bring you lunch and you just have a few snacks here and there. So your preparation is completely different. And all the fact that like this year we're stuck in our room, so we couldn't go anywhere like the grocery store to pick up our food. So it was kind of different. We we're alone this year. So I've learned a lot last year and uh, I just got stuck in a really hard heat, like with uh, Alexi and Tom, and mm -hmm. end up being the stones. I I did my best for stones. I came up short, but let's keep going short against Tom is uh, <laughs> it's something, right? Yeah, getting put up against him with stones is almost like a no-win situation for most people. But like I said, I was talking to JF the other night, and he said, "Keep your eye out for Max because um, you know basically JF said." Same thing you're saying. World's Strongest Man is different than any other competition. It's yeah, more TV yeah. focused. And he also made the point of, like, if you can't do stones well, you almost have no chance at Worlds. But he said, you know, Max has been really raising his stone game recently, so he's going to come in much stronger than last year. Would you agree with that? That uh, brag, that bragging that he did for you? 100%. Like, last year, like, I actually moved and we opened our own gym facility. So I, I had one or two training stone before Worlds. So now I've been training them every day, every week. So uh, now I've done my 469. I'm building a 500 stone this week so I can be able to train with that as well. Oof. I'm feeling really confident with that lately, yeah. I mean, do we think the stones are going to get up to 500 at Worlds? No, but uh, if you're used to using a 500, the 400 pound is a lot easier, right? Yeah, makes sense because you want to you wanna have the speed, right? Yeah, exactly. And there's other shows coming like uh, – Seattle, it's a 530 stone over bar for reps, and like it, that's what happens with Strama, right? Every show is every is different events, so you need to be good at everything to eventually like stay consistent. Yeah, for sure. Now a word about Go Hard Labs. Are you looking for a pre-workout that doesn't make your skin crawl but still gives you some solid energy for your workouts or even just to get through your day when you're exhausted like I am from making all my YouTube content? You should check out Go Hard Labs and use my code MBSM10 to get 10% off of your purchase. They're taking pre-orders now. The product is so popular that they've sold out. Make sure and get your pre-order in so you can get your driven from Go Hard Labs as soon as it becomes available. And again, make sure to use my code MBSM10, stands for my block, strongest man, to get your 10% off. And now back to today's topic. And then you have the Shaw Classic again this year, right? Exactly, yeah. So what, what were your thoughts there? I mean, people kind of had uh, mixed reactions of that. I thought he did a great job, like, putting something together on short notice like that and getting so many of the top guys together. And I felt like, you know, from a spectator's point of view, taking care of you guys really well and what was your perspective going through it? Uh, it's really amazing. Like, uh, Brian takes care of us. Like, you, you can see, like, we were struggling last year with, with shows and we're not, we weren't getting a lot of cash prize. And a lot of people are looking for sponsorship and that toward the year to get money, right? So, like, he stepped up really big for us. Um, everything he does is really professional. It was amazing. Like, it was one of the best shows I've ever been. Like, he fed us. He made sure we were, like, located properly the events and everything was on point and uh, he's probably making a bigger, better show this year. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm looking at my notes from last year. You did really well on log last year. Um, farmers as well. Right. And then um, the yoke is somewhere you struggled. Is that somewhere where you've been adding a little bit more attention? Yeah. I'm way better right now. I'm, I'm able to move with the weight that uh, was at Brian Shaw last year already. Um, I was really tired at that show. Like I was getting injured. Like my injuries were starting to build up. So I'm actually taking care of a lot more of my body and it's paying off right now. Great. What did you think? So I, I uh, asked JF this too. What did you think of the altitude? Did it affect you? Do you think it affected the other guys? Like, um, I don't want to go so far as to say Brian had an unfair advantage. Brian did spectacular and deserved to win. Yeah, but, sure, but yeah, but like, did, did you feel the altitude, especially in the mountain gym? Yeah. Uh, I was fine until we went up to the circus dumbbell where it actually hit pretty well. And like, just basically the recovery between events wasn't that fast. Like usually I'm able to recover a lot faster, but uh, there it takes a bit more to recover. It's funny. JF said the same thing. He said it, the, the uh, altitude shows up the most in circus dumbbell. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> so Sam, being a circus expert yourself, why is that? What is so hard about circus dumbbell that, that you need so much air? I really think like, and I do, I say this to everyone, like circus dumbbell is, you're only using, let's say half of your body, right? Like, cause like the implement is on one shoulder, but it is, it has to be the most taxing um, overhead. The fact that you need to bring that much weight your from the floor up to one shoulder takes a lot of energy like my 170 last week i felt gassed out and it was single so um for shows for us women it's probably about 130 135 and the other day i was doing reps of five or six with 130 and you get gassed out it's a hu it's a huge implement to be brought up up to your shoulder and then on top of your head, right? Um, not taking it away from the log or any other overhead events, but I really think that it is a really taxing uh, event. And I actually did some log press the day before the Shaw Classic, and I was feeling gassed out too. I was like, is it the traveling or is it the altitude? And um, it was a bit of both too, but like the, the altitude will really get to you. It's, and then day two for the boys, they were up in the mountain, so even higher up. Um, we could feel it. We definitely, and I wasn't competing, but like, you know, having still that anxiety and like pressure of like, you know, I, we're a team, right? So if Max competed, yeah. at, like it, it, it's same effect for me. Right. But I definitely felt it for the boys that weekend where the altitude is, but it's fun, right? It's challenging to go up into new turf and, um, you're thinking like, oh, I haven't touched the implement. No, you haven't touched that air altitude as well. So it, it came to play for everyone. I think, um, it was still a really heavy show. It could have been anyone's show. I think yeah. it's just, and Brian had no advantage on that at all. He did a tremendous, uh, he had a really good comp competition weekend. Um, but it was it was great to see uh, the boys that weekend. It was probably the best show I've ever been to. I mean, to see Jerry Pritchett and JF Connell go head to head on that deadlift, and I was maybe 10 feet away from them was something I'll never forget. It was quite the experience, yeah. Yeah, it's a, so you brought up like five different things I want to talk about there. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no, it's uh, I just have to remember them all. So basically, uh, JF and Jerry, I met, I was talking to JF about this too. What JF did was incredible. 1,202 pound Hummer tire deadlift is incredible. But we don't want to take away from Jerry because like, so Shivlikov is known for giving more of himself than anybody else, yeah. right? Yeah. But that day, Jerry gave more of himself. He, he's in that echelon now. Like if you watch him, he just gave, so much of himself that he tried again and, and could barely move it, you know? So it's, yeah, uh, yeah. it was just amazing to watch like how much Jerry was willing to give to kind of try to match him. Jerry was really, really up. Like he really wanted that deadlift so bad. And I think he'll get it for sure. It was just a matter of the day of the comp. And I think the altitude again made quite the impact, but if you would have seen, I don't know if you guys seen much on that live feed or um, the video, but, they all look like warm up for JS until the last one. I'm like, okay, they finally did. you actually tried. <laughs> and it was the world record. I mean, up to eleven fifty, he was moving the weight like nothing already. Yeah, he so, he moved every rep the same way. It was, it was unbelievable, it was except insane. that last one. He was ready, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He he said to me, uh <laughs> the last rep is the first one where I really had to try. <laughs> and I think on day one, J uh JF, what happened to his foot? Oh, he got stuck in the frame. The frame kind of like went oh, on really? an ankle or something happened. Yeah, so he kind of iced it up a little bit that night, and we went to the hotel and trying to make it better. And he's like, after that world record, he's like, I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of the adrenaline, right? So Yep, yep. But yeah, so so putting to bed that Brian had the advantage, um, uh, the other counter argument I'll make is Alexi was just fine with Circus Dumbbell. That didn't, that didn't affect him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I wanted to ask you a few more questions because so you were talking about how taxing the circus dumbbell can be. And, um, you know, first of all, for people who have never tried a circus dumbbell before, do what I do. Grab, you know, buy a fat grip from Amazon. It's 20, 30 bucks, whatever. And put it on a regular dumbbell and, and try to do it. And you'll start immediately understanding that you have to ask experienced people like this, the technique, because you're not, it's, it's not uh, intuitive. Is that fair, Sam? Like it's it, getting it centered over your body is something you don't think of. And it goes out like that. If you don't yeah, yeah. watch what you're 100%. doing. Um, so, you know, when like, I'm, 
I don't want to say this. I don't, you know, any cocky way or anything. There's always that one event that you're just really gifted or really good, better at than anything else. There's some ladies running with 700 pound yoke. Um, and there's people just deadlifting naturally more. And it's more of a genetic thing. The circus dumbbell, I started doing it a year and a two years ago with Max. When I met him, I because I prior to that, I've only done a few comps and I had no implements to train with. So when I got to Tum Thunder Bay, I really was able to practice circus dumbbell more. And our first was it our first session? I got the the one thirty one. So a session in with Max, I had already a hundred and thirty over my head. So wow. But the technique, looking back, was horrible. So from there, I was like, okay, I am actually very decently strong at it. Um, let's work on technique. And I just really focused on, you need a lot of core work. People don't think like core is yep. like, oh, like get your shoulders stronger or get your legs stronger. But your core is your trunk, right? It's the midsection. And I've really been working on a lot of oblique. I think heavy squats, heavy deadlifts does really um, transfer a lot to uh, having a really strong core. And uh, circus dumbbell is just something that ever since I fell in love with that implement right away. And I was always been able to push myself. Now I have, Max and I have really good uh, backgrounds on training. So that's why we're personal trainers. And bringing our two heads together, we're able to build plans and building um really good uh programs together and the program max uh wrote for me this time on my circus dumbbell i'm very confident on hitting that world record in shortly in, in three weeks um so we're um it comes with a lot of technique a lot of work but i think the confidence that you can um bring to yourself into a training session goes a long way i know that if i don't respect that dumbbell that's on the floor I won't be as efficient. So I really need to dial everything in when it comes to, especially when it comes to 170 pound over your head. So, yeah. Yeah. For people who have never tried this before, just to put this in perspective, I do like half that weight. I mean, not that I haven't trained for years like you have, but you know, I am, uh, I enjoy it as much as you do. I am not gifted like you are. <laughs> it, it's something that you really need to focus on when you set yourself to some goals and you got to make sure that everything that re revolves around that, training session um comes into play when you touch that dumbbell yeah the interesting thing is just going back to the technique a little bit is uh, i had leifa ingles on here and i was talking to her about the technique for circus and she mentioned something really interesting so she doesn't stand over it she stands away from it so that when she grabs it it swings between the legs and has momentum to get up onto the shoulder so you don't waste all your energy getting it up and you have more for the press and i never thought of that and then i started doing it and just without being any stronger at all like my pr went up 10 10 pounds so it's yes, like yes. you know the, t the technique is um very very important yes especially yes. you're clean right if you struggle bringing it up to your shoulder you're already gassed out and pressing is something else so you have to make sure that you're able to, um, it's it's a huge hip thrust, right? When you grab that mm -hmm. dumbbell, you really gotta uh, engage your hips and bring them or be explosive with them. Now that the weight that we're gonna be pressing, it's almost my body weight. So that makes it, I need to be aggressive in everything I do. If I slack in my, in my clean or my press, uh, in my punch, there's something that's gonna go off. So I really make gotta make sure everything's on point when I go into that circus dumbbell. Yeah, you make a good point about the hip thrust. So when I watch people like you who are good at circus, you're all, Donna Moore too, you're all getting off the ground. And when I try it, I don't get off the ground. But I think that goes back to your, your heavy squat training. Yeah, and then also the implements that you're training with. So just an example, when I went to the Arnold's last year, um, there was a 160s uh, dumbbell, rogue dumbbell in the back, and it was a three-inch um, fat uh, or a grip. Now, my 12-inch plate loadable here is a one and a half to two. two so i couldn't get that two uh that 160 in the back i couldn't i just couldn't get it so it was really hard for me to go into that stage and try to hit 180 um when i couldn't get that 160 now the 180 in the front was a two and a half inch so it's, it's a bit different but just after that hour hour and a half when i got back to my seat i was like i am buying that dumbbell and i'm gonna crush it because i knew that i was able to just on the spot, right? That's what Max and I like 
teach our, our clients too, is like, you have to be able to be an athlete and be able to, fo- whatever is thrown at you, you have to make it work, right? And if mm-hmm. you don't, you take a step back and you work on it. So we got home, got a circus dumbbell, and we've been building and building slowly to what we're going to be achieving in a few weeks. <laughs> Fantastic. So we've been talking talking a lot of circus dumbbell. Max, when you first got into Strongman, what was the implement that really got your attention that you loved and you said, I got to do that? Uh, the log and the farmer's walk. I've been really good my whole career at it. And I used to never train farmer's walk at the beginning unless I've been competing with it. Because I, really? I never needed to train it. Yeah. Like my first few, I was able to do a 400 pound walk in the first few months of training that. So what's the most important aspect of getting good at Farmer's Walk? I know you're saying it's more natural to you, but is it more grip? Is it more making sure it doesn't run into your legs, like maybe all of the above? Yeah, it's all of the above, basically. Like, uh, if you hit your legs, like your grip's going to let go a lot faster. Like, if you're like, like at Worlds, like for the 330 for a distance, it was banging my legs. And it's not my grip that was giving up. It's my legs because we were just tired and exhausted of getting hit. So now that I know what it, what to do with it, you just get flare your lats a lot more, so you, it's not going to hit your legs. But uh, even training your legs for like high, in, like for endurance as well, it's really important for if you're going to bang your legs all the time, right? Yeah, I guess it's like a boxer, right? Getting hit to the body, you tire out. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think I, I think kind of Trey struggled a little bit with that. It just hit his legs a lot and couldn't couldn't get going. Well, Trey doesn't have a really good grip. He's getting a lot better now, but like it was, it's one of his weak spot, right? Yeah, uh, I don't know if you saw Texas Strongest Man at all. Throwing kegs over a high pole is not one of his weak spots. No, no, <laughs> I saw that. It was crazy, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody watching said we feel bad for the guys in the back trying to stop. I, oh, the guys yeah. with the, yeah. the mats. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's, that's one. Of, that's probably like our favorite, like one of our favorite events too. We like the sandbag throws. Um, mm-hmm. They say it's a Canadian thing. I think we're really, we're really good at it, and um, it's something that we do. We don't really practice, but leading up to a comp, we'll do a few. Um, again, that's just about being explosive, being explosive, and being an athlete. And that's what we keep saying to everyone. Like you'll see a lot of people, and that kind of like is one of my biggest pet peeves. Like they're whatever 10 12 weeks out and all they do all they do is the five six events so then if you have a back-to-back show the second or third show following you're screwed because you haven't been practicing everything and we are very big into we train five six times a week and we're very big about just being good everywhere right still do your squat your deadlift everything your yoke your farmers like we always throw them out not throw them in our training and now that we have a JF in our corner really looking at our training uh, methods and, and our um, events. It, it's really going to bring us to a next level within the next few years for sure. Yeah, I mean, JF puts on contests as well. Uh, Max, have you ever been on one of his shows? No, we have 12 shows a year with that, <laughs> with that circus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, it's exhausting, but it's fun, and that's how you get better, right? Cause yeah. We, know, we never have once the same event for shows, and doing 10 shows a year will actually help you out. Right, it's exhausting yeah. and taxing, but like, it got me to where I'm at now. So like, I just have a few holes in my, in like, I just have my weaknesses, yoke and deadlift right now, and that's it. So that's why Santa Monica was so great for me, because like, at every show you go to states, you always have a yoke and a deadlift, a yoke and a deadlift. So that's why it took me so long to hit the world scene, because out of five events, when two of them is your weak spot, you can't come back from that, right? So that's right. the sport. So like, yeah, I've been working at out for them to get better but it's finally cluing in that uh, it's finally dialing in that i'm able to do a yoke a bit more than what i usually do <laughs> what so what would you say are kind of the main tips to do a yoke correctly i i was surprised when i talked to uh, other strength athletes that said basically you hold your breath the whole time because if you don't you don't have a solid core and it's like you know the soda can kind of pressure thing where you, you try to uh, take a big breath go as fast as you can get done with it and let it out but is that the way you do it? Do you agree? Kind of what are your tips for yoke? Uh, it depends. I used to, so for farmer's walk, I'll breathe for every step to push my gut against my belt. I used to do that for yoke, but now trying that method of just keeping my, like, like the pop kind of effect, it's working out. But like, sometimes I just, I'm so used to breathing throughout. So like, I always go back to that way. Yeah. 
This is a, uh, so I'll ask you a question about the yoke at worlds last year that eh, may or may not be controversial to me. It is. Uh, so the way they set up the yoke at worlds, there was a motorcycle on three sides, but not four. How much did the imbalance affect people? I don't know. I didn't, I haven't tried it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, probably didn't help, uh, <laughs> Graham Hicks to blow a bicycle. Cause you probably need to push a lot in the yoke. So yeah. I, I, from a fan's point of view, you see that and you're like, Colin, why did you do that? I, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a TV show, right? It looks impressive having three instead of just two, right? Yeah, I guess so. I guess mm. so. Uh, that's interesting. But yeah, so both of you are talking about kind of being well-rounded athletes. So Max, I think, I guess that would mean you're uh, happy that Brian Shaw has added more events this year to the Shaw Classic. <laughs> Is that a fair assumption? I love it. I'm way better because I'm able to hit like finish like three like a top three top four position everywhere else except for those two so like if i, I like last year in warwick i got a at the arnold's i got a zero and a one and i still finished second place because everything else i was wow. getting second and third place right yeah so it brings me back up so if people are not consistent like that they always play around compared like if i get top placing it gives me like a lot more points and then there's 15 athletes so like first place costs a lot more than a first place with just 10 guys right yeah for sure for sure it's interesting you brought that up so either one of you talk strategy and strongman so i think that kind of the the uh novice person watching in the audience thinks you go out and do you know the best you possibly can on every single event but sometimes the points work out where you don't have to right so do you uh either one of you talk uh talk strategy and strongman and educate well, the, the audience well the best way was at brian shaw for a yoke right i knew i wasn't gonna get up next to points so why go all out on that event and just get destroyed for for nothing for the same point right so that's why i just take three four steps and i realize okay i'm not going to move up with this so i'm just going to stop right there to save energy for the next one mm -hmm. yeah yeah there's a lot more uh mental going on than i think people realize oh, uh, yeah. sure yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so let's kind of go back we talked sam about kind of how you got into uh strong woman but max how did you find first find strong man uh, I went to college for health and fitness promotion in Sudbury and I started training for bodybuilding and throughout the bodybuilding like my second year in I met one of my friend Yannick who interested he's like hey you're strong you should come try out the strongman events every Saturday so I went there so the first thing we tried was every every training we were doing a log press farmers walk and then the sled push pull and finish off with a tire and then every week I was going I was getting better and better and um I just never looked back since the first day. Ten years ago. Ten years ago. <laughs> Ten yeah. years ago. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, and Sam, some of your posts just you look pretty lean. Did you ever do bodybuilding? I did. I did. I did a bodybuilding show last October. Um, due to COVID, a few imp a few things came into place. So COVID make uh, made us kind of not being able to work. So we had to clean up our diet. So no more takeout food. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we kind of like I was kind of getting leaner and there was no strongman show promising last year at all. There was nothing uh, like everything was being postponed or canceled. And we do we had a, a local show here. So I was like, <clears throat> let's go. Let's reveal what the muscles have done over the last few years. And it was quite the experience. Never uh, would I never do it again. I mean, I have the pro card in strongman and I have a few pro totals in powerlifting. It'd be kind of neat to kind of finish that triangle with the uh, uh, pro card in bodybuilding. But um, I'm going to hold on for that for now because I still have lots to accomplish as a strong woman. So, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. What was the journey to getting the pro card in strong woman? How did you obtain that? Um, so the nationals in uh, for the amateurs came to my home province in new brunswick three years ago now right yeah so two and a half years ago and um they had we have no pro women or strong women's in new brunswick so they knew i was doing powerlifting and they're like you're kind of strong you have a good deadlift is that something that you'd be interested in and i'm like yeah for sure it's a strength sport so might as well give it a go and um, I went to that show with one show prior to that that I just kind of like had to do. I had to travel a few hours, but I, I just needed to get my feet wet. And then I went to nationals 
and I finished fourth. Um, and at that comp, there was a yoke, which was my first time ever do getting under. Um, there was a circus dumbbell, which I had been able to practice before. Um, it's because I used to go at a, a good life, which had dumbbells. So I kind of mm -hmm. had to do it. I had the ab ability to do it a few times before. There was a deadlift, which I was fortunate. And then there was a Husafel and a stone. Things I've never done before until nationals. So I went to that show, finished half a point off the podium. And that day, I'll always remember, it lit the fire in my ass. And I was like, I am going to train now. And next year, I'm going to do something wild. And 365 days after I won the whole show, I um, got my pro card that day. And a month after, did my first pro show and won that pro show. Just I just kind of proved to myself that I really deserve to be on that pro circuit, which was really fast. It happened really quick. Um, so I've won a few pro shows since then in Canada and going to the Arnold against a Andrea just really uh, lit the fire. And I was like, okay, I'm able to compete now and hopefully make my first appearance at OSG this year. Was she kind of uh, deeper into her career than you? So you were kind of, um, you know, well, um, I, I can compete with somebody who is already extremely accomplished kind of thing. Yeah, this was just last year. Um, so not 2020, uh, one would have been 2020, 2019. 2019. Yeah. So she must have been a few years and everyone knew who she was. She of was course. actually just a few months away from her world record uh, log press. And mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was really good to be able to um, get my feet wet with her and just to see where I, I uh, was with her. Um, I got her on the log and the stone that day. Um, and yeah, it was great. Now, again, I can't wait to go into the world stage and see where I'm at. Yeah. And then, Max, what's your story? How did you uh, get to pro level? Uh, just basically by doing the shows in Canada, we got I got grandfathered in. That's uh, when they create a circuit, and then uh, for pro international, I went to Sp I went to Sweden and Giants Live in 2016, uh, Poland in 2017, and the Arnold's here. But uh, basically, I would say my career finally started like expanded at since Santa Monica for sure. So for people who aren't familiar, compare and contrast World's Strongest Man to Arnold's. What are, what are the differences? Arnold's a lot heavier than the world's. Uh, Arnold's, you actually have like a good qualifying system to go to the finals. I'm not sure what's going to happen now because of COVID and everything else. But, uh, and then Giant Slive is more like, Giant Slive is like, the world's is way better. Like if you'd be a UK athlete type of thing, because uh, you actually have, you're able to travel to the, all the Giant Slive because we only have one here in North America, which is the Giants Live in the, the States. But besides that, there's no shows for us for to, to be able to try to qualify for Worlds, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, so for this year's Worlds, um, I was watching Big Laws' channel, and he was talking about he, he thinks there's too many UK and too many US guys in there. And he's from the UK, and he's saying yeah. there's too many... There, there are countries that are not represented. Um, I don't want to get you in trouble, Max, but do you agree? And uh, who who would you say should be there that isn't there? Well, like I just said, right, the Giants Slide, like, they, they have their shows at specific place. So, like, a lot of people, like, from, let's say, for example, Africa, I don't know, like, they're not going to travel there to do one show to try to stand out. Like, it's a lot better now with social media. Like, you can actually see athletes and see where they're at. But besides that, there's not really nothing we can do until like we have more Giants Live shows or like they want to do that or like they start like, I, I know it sucks, but like if you have like an online, qualify, online qualification for like the rest of the worlds that like you can actually maybe qualify like that for worlds would be an option, but it's not the same as competing, right? Right. And at the end of the day, it's a TV show <laughs> for the UK and the States. So obviously you'll have more guys there. Yeah. You know, like, like, like it's been annoying because for the past five or six years, I've been wondering, like, why am I not invited to Worlds? Because I beat a lot of those guys throughout the year, but I'm not there, you know? So just when the time comes, it comes. Just keep training. Just keep getting stronger. And you won't just go to Worlds to go to Worlds. You actually have a chance to go to Finals. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'll, I'll answer for you. I wish Irvin Toots were there. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Uh, but but you saw the interview with Colin that with uh, Big Lois. He said like he was injured last year and he 
he just did that one event, right? So it makes sense at the end of the day, but like it's sad as well, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and there's a limited number of guys too. You can't have everybody, right? You think of someone exactly. That you think should yeah. be there. Like Kurtin is not invited this year. There's yeah. a lot of guys that like should be there that aren't. And there's people that are there that shouldn't be there. Like it's I did it today. It's their call, right? I really think Rob yeah. Kern should be there. Really think he should be there. Is he fully recovered? He was at Worcester a couple of weeks ago. So that's true. You're right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think he he would be all yeah. He would be ready for June. And he said on his uh, YouTube channel after Worcester that he was getting ready for World. So I think that must have been a really big curveball for him. Well, he's an alternative. So yeah, which. At the end of the day, the few alternative usually get on board. Someone, oh, especially with COVID and all that stuff. Knock right on now. wood, someone pulls out or get hurts or whatever. And with COVID, the traveling and stuff. So yep. and it's in the states, so you should be able to get on. And I think he does deserve to be at the at Worlds. Yeah, actually, uh, I think Mateus had a similar injury about a month or two after Rob, and Mateus is going to Worlds. So I would imagine Rob is no, pretty well recovered. Boy, right now. No, I think. I don't, oh, he's not. I don't no. think. Oh, am I confused with Shaw Classic, maybe? Uh, he's not even Yeah, yeah, he's, he's doing oh, yeah, Shaw he Classic. Yeah, yeah, he is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what it is. So he's going yeah. to, oh, he's going to Shaw Classic because it's two months later. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, interesting. But, uh, so, but he had issues with his recovery. Oh, he did? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. This is not it's, uh, getting hurt there. Like it's yeah. just like third or fourth Second seri- time with tricep injury. Yeah, tricep injury, the same, in- injury, yeah. the same one, and yeah, it's too bad he's a young kid with lots of potential. For sure, for sure. I mean, do either of you want to talk about kind of um, battling through injuries? I don't know if you've had serious injuries before, but like what he's doing to me is smart, right? He's he's taking his time and recovering the right way instead of trying to rush back. Would you agree with that position? Kind of how do you handle injuries? Uh, 100%. I tore my pec completely off the attachment in 2016 and uh, went through surgery in June. And uh, I didn't want I'm, – I'm really competitive, so I didn't want to go back on the strength set like right away. So I decided to focus on doing another bodybuilding show. So I stepped on stage that November – so be able to lift like just more volume instead of lifting heavy because I couldn't like it, it was it was hard like all my Facebook all my Instagram followers like it's all people lifting heavy so it's kind of sad like seeing a weaker person or stronger person just getting stronger than you so I'm like I just need to take the time to recover and mm-hmm. uh, after that eight months later I broke the the national record for log press so it healed up like a lot better like I'm still doing physio for it now like dry kneeling and stuff like that to recover the scar tissue because it's really big uh, but it's finally getting better right yeah so i mean for people who haven't done a log press before can you talk about how it's different than let's say an axle <laughs> oh it's overhead uh, your hands are in a in a hammer grip style so it's not as a straight bar you need to so it's not a leg drive up, it's more of a hip drive because you need to, to push your upper body backwards like pushing your hips forward. So it's kind of hard to use your leg drive because the the, the the log is bigger. So you need to work around it, not straight up and down. So that's why it makes it a lot harder, easier, whoever, like if you're better or not with that way. But I was always better at log press and axle press. Really? Interesting. Yeah, yeah I would. I, I would. A lot more dominant than my uh, shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, because I was wondering about the, the fact that an axle is basically against your body. A log has um, diameter, so to speak. So, yeah, like, if yeah. it's a, if it's a 12-inch log, the center of the log is six inches away from your chest. It's not right over your center of gravity. So yeah, That's why you're uh, taking back a bit more, so your hips are coming forward. So when you use your leg drag, you want to push your knees out instead of forward like your axle. And uh, so as you press, you're shooting your hips back, Right to go right underneath it instead of pushing back. Interesting. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, I I, uh, I save all these tips for later. <laughs> he's going to get stronger than all of you, and then he's going to no, be like, thank you guys. Never, <laughs> never, never. <laughs> That's interesting. I also so kind of for, like, the yeah. log and axle. Sorry, I didn't want to cut you, but uh, – No, no, go ahead. Especially for females, because I do have, like, mostly we have female clients. It's, the log is – it, when you come to a 10 or 12 inch, it's big on your chest, right? Yeah, then, and yeah. for us, like women's, like we're not big chested like the men. So compared to an axle, the log is a 
big 10 inch on your chest and your shoulder and it makes that a little bit harder to breathe a little bit heavy on your chest especially when you're getting up to your body weight right um so those are really good cues you got to make sure that your hips are under the log and so that you need to lean back right that so then your whole body is the center of the um, of the log press or the the log itself very okay it, yeah is the breathing an issue because it's right on the sternum and the collarbone i find yes and then the women's will find yes um especially when you do get a, a, as again i find the body weight is where most women start to struggle is when you get to your body weight and up um it's it's a huge implement to have on your chest right and then when i hold my axle my axle can come off of and then off my chest and i can breathe way easier so then you're not focusing about passing out or not or you know breathing it's not that much of an issue with the axle than it is with the log interesting mm -hmm. so cool so we we've been talking a lot about uh implements so far let's kind of rewind a little bit whoever would like to go first Tell the audience something interesting about your upbringing, your background, your roots that you think people might not know that would be interested in. I have nothing, basically. <laughs> we're, we're French. We're French. <laughs> play, play hockey, and I got selfish. Did a self like focus on a sport that you can do yourself. Because uh, if if you lose because of somebody else is weaker in your team, it's not fun. You can't do nothing about it, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I was a boxing fan for so long. I like the uh, the single person. But yet again, stuff. you need to have the team behind you to be better, right? Like, right. Uh, as much as you're alone on that platform, you're not really alone everywhere else, right? You, you guys, you can't forget that. Like, like you have like your massage therapist, your physio, like your friends, like your training yes. partners are really important for you. Like, at the end of the day, you need to, you need to be smart by picking your training partners because people there's some training partners can, that can drag you down some that can help you rise up it all depends like what you need that day right and that's really important as well because there's a lot of time like i used to be the, like if you're always the strongest guy in the gym like you go out you train you want to deadlift 600 pounds everybody's impressed about like your 600 pounds so they uh you get lazy because it's it's good but you it's know? not good enough but it's not good enough so you need to have those person those people that might be stronger than you on those events mm -hmm. to actually make you push or like you need to realize that like, yeah, I need to push more than those numbers to actually get better to where we're at, right? Because like my deadlift is still, like I say, it's not good, but it's still 800 pounds. So it's really good, but like, it's not good to where I'm at. So that's why I need to keep pushing towards that and like, just keep fighting. Like, I understand like, my trade, oh, like, y'all say good job, but like, is it though? Yeah. Like, it's good for you, but like, it's not good to where I want to be. So like, your training partner needs to understand it. Like, you have goals, you have ambitions, and you need that push as much as you're going to push them, right? Right. Yeah. You need to set. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Set the right goals. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, talking about deadlift, this is something that I always ask um, for both of you, Max, if you want to go first. What if you're going to deadlift? What's a proper warm up for you? If I wanted to learn how to deadlift properly, um, like, do you start off with one plate and work your way up? Like, how do you warm up to? I don't know if you go maximum in the gym or not, but how do you warm up to the highest weight you're going to do in the gym safely? No, it all depends how strong you're, right? Because I'll go one plate, two plates, all the way up to six plates before adding quarters. Compared to Sam, she'll add like a plate, two plates, and then she'll do the, the half plates in between, right? It all depends where you feel comfortable at. What's the rest in between sets? Training partners. Training partners. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they go, then you go. We're yeah, usually, exactly. there's usually what, five of us? Yeah. Or Our group's five or th from three. anyways from three to five. And usually like we don't really try to waste too much time between sets because by the time we take the plates off and we'll reload it and then you're, you put your straps on and you put your chalk and your song and your ammonia, then it's time to go, right? So, um, and then we have so much accessories, which is our main focus that uh, we don't want to put like, and two hours on deadlifts and then we have to do an hour and a half two hours of accessory that really drags right so usually we always try to go 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 and we don't time our sets but we try not to take a a five ten minute break a couple minutes is good okay cool so another thing i think people might find interesting uh, people from other parts of um you know other parts of the world who aren't familiar with ontario what is the best part of ontario culture would you say I'm not from Ontario. Oh. 
<laughs> the the nature this it's really like the yeah. scenic routes that you can have like For sure it's a really beautiful province but uh winters are really long man where we're at <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's not like Toronto, like we're real, like we're a lot more up there, so like we're close to a lake, so it's really colder in the winter. But like the summer, fall, and spring, they're really nice uh, mm -hmm. seasons for sure. Great for hiking, lots of lake and mountains. Uh, yeah, it's a great, beautiful. We have a beautiful country here, so absolutely, it, yeah. Yeah, I was talking to uh, JF the other day. I've been to Quebec City before, and it's incredible. I really uh, Quebec would Quebec. love to go back. Yeah. 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 yeah, so I'm in northern New Jersey. We have uh, similar very cold winters. We had uh, record-breaking snow this uh, this winter, so I'm uh, <laughs> aware of how cold winters Yes, it gets be. really cold. It gets like about like minus 40 here for a few for a few weeks, and then it kind of, wow. uh, but yeah, it warms up, but minus 40 is pretty much where we we peak. <laughs> that's bad. Yeah, that's it bad. is. <laughs> Yeah, the other thing of uh, people from the U.S. who haven't been to Canada before is the population difference. So, like, I was in uh, I was in Winnipeg for work one time, and I walked outside, and I live really close to New York City, so I'm used to that as a city. The traffic, yeah, yeah, it just the the population in the U.S. is like ten times more than Canada. So, like, I, I walked out in Winnipeg. In New what's York that? Only, the New York only population is um, the same as Canada, if, like close to Canada. <laughs> is it real? Weather, so. Yeah. yeah, I think I think Canada is like 30 something million and the US is 300 and something million. There you go. So, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I walked outside in Winnipeg and, you know, it was it was refreshing. I could walk around without bumping really? into yeah. people. But I thought, like, where is everybody? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there something I should be aware of? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Winnipeg has a lot of uh, underground, which yeah. so a lot of the, a lot of them were there. <laughs> We uh, we're, we're about like six hours from Winnipeg. Right. OK. Yeah. We're very close. Yeah. Got some new tires coming in the gym, so awesome. <laughs> delivering them earlier. Okay, yeah. I'll, Max will go help them out real quick there. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I was just asking, did you have a hero growing up, and has that changed today? Um, so growing up, like I played 20, 21 or 22 years of hockey, so I was a very big hockey player growing up. Um, so I've always had those women's that I would look up to. Um, again, when I got into strength training, it was just kind of like the luck of the draw where like, um, I was looking for a job and one of my uh, cousin's fiance was a fitness uh, manager at A Good Life. So he gave me a front desk job and that's kind of how I got into the gym. Um, I didn't touch a weight till like six months into uh, that job either. Like I was really timid and I played hockey, hockey, hockey. So um, having heroes, uh, once I started lifting weights, I had a lot like I started looking up to a lot of people right so I want to say like Laura Phelps um, was probably the biggest um, my biggest motivator when I started lifting weights um, but I also had like those hockey women that were so really strong right like um, that I would like always look to see like what they were doing for their solid training but then always like kind of put the weight training on the back burner because um, that was just not something that, like, even playing university hockey, I was never introduced to the weight room then. So, wow. which is very sad for, especially for me, like, now that I'm a personal trainer where, like, a coach and, like, I just, I want to get my, those hockey players into the city, into the weight training to see how much benefit they could get from it, right? So, mm -hmm. um, having heroes, I've, I'm now, I, I'm so new still to this sport, like, Donna and Andrea, those are all girls now that I, just wish one day that I can be half of the, the women as they are. So, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to, to talk to them and they're just regular people. Donna is so nice when you right? talk to her. Like, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It makes the, yeah. Fun, the, the sports that much funner, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I mean, speaking of other competitors, do you have kind of a favorite person you've competed with? Um, well, there's many. Like, I'm such, like, a competitor where, like, I'm, I'm very motivating when it comes to the show, like, because what happens on show day um, is something that, like, every woman just want to put everything they've done for the last 12 weeks of prepping. So 
I'm really friends with a lot of my competitors. Um, I can say like in Canada, like I really love competing with like Emily and Mel. Um, those are really great athletes too that would push me. Even my training partner, like she's an amateur, but will push the shit out of me in the gym, right? So um, when I work like while, like I haven't done a lot of international shows, um, but when going to Europe, I was able to do it Emily and Andrea, which was amazing. Um, so really, um, Donna, even doing that circus dumbbell, like in the back, it was kind of like a good Christian, like it was a really good way to get my, um, to get out there. And I just can't wait to be able to compete with all the, these wonderful women's. Yeah, absolutely. Donna's record at 180 on circus. She's tied yeah. with somebody, right? Who is she Christian, tied with? Christian, yeah, Christian Road, okay. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. right, 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 right. I got to get her on one of these days. I bet mm -hmm. she would be. Yeah, she's, awesome I think, interview. like, America's Strongest Women, like, eight or nine times. I want to say something wow. crazy like that, too. Yeah, yeah, she's a legend, for sure. Kristen Rhodes is a legend. She is a legend, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, let's see. What else did I want to ask you? Um <laughs> Oh, uh, kind of the other flip of the coin. Who would you have wanted to compete against who you haven't had a chance to yet? Um, I guess Hannah Lindsay from the stage. She's pretty badass. Uh, we were able to share the backstage uh, at the Arnolds together when she did her uh, world record sandbag toss. Um, but she's such a good motivating person, such in the zone, just like I am, right? And um, I think I really, really enjoyed training with her or competing with her. So definitely Hannah from the States. And then even like being doing a really good competition with Donna and Jess. Um, I think a few of them, even uh, Dirks, Kim Dirks, Dirk, I think we're, most of us are going to that show in Seattle in August, um, the one that Rob Kearney's pull, putting up. So hopefully that we can all meet there and have a really good uh, girl day. <laughs> yeah, I wonder, is he going to stream that? He should, yeah, I, I'm okay. assuming, yeah. Yeah, Clash on the Coast for sure is being streamed. That yes, I know. that I know for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Anthony put together like quite a show Crazy. there. I mean, just it's like. It's going to be amazing. I'm just very unfortunate we can't make it. I mean, we got to come back here and pay a hotel in Toronto for three nights and then quarantine for two weeks. And if our business is up and running, like we taking day time off, especially that we're still in a lockdown right now. So okay. we haven't been working we probably had to take off like 10 or 11 months over the last year because of COVID. So taking time off right now is quite, uh, when we're, it's, it's a lot of money, right? So yeah, just for sure. Make sure that for we're sure. here to make sure things are running. So we're just still going to do it here. And, but he's going to put on such an amazing show. I can't wait to see it. It's yeah, awesome he's got the 105. Yeah, it's great. We have one here. Very good. He won national last year as a 105 kilo. Um, and he hasn't, he didn't qualify for a clash of the coast, but this is the first of, of many. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, he has like, uh, I think Rob Kearney and big laws are commentators there. So yes. It's... And I think Lisa is a, a head ref and yes. Yeah. There's a, uh, maybe is, I don't know, big Z, no big Z's not going. They announced someone else so. for a cup for a head ref there, but I'm not quite sure who, Where? uh, at clash of the coast. It's, uh... Laws and Kearney commentating. Yeah. Yep. And Lises. Lises and then Nick Best. Right. Nick Best, yeah. Right, Nick Best, yeah. That's so yeah, cool. He yeah, and he's got that, like, the American log record that, do you see the six later log? Yeah. Yeah, the, whoever gets the American record gets to keep it, and uh, it's just going to be a really good show, yeah. That's all. What are your predictions? Who's going to break the American log record? I don't care about the American record. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Good answer. No, no, I don't. I don't know. I have no idea. I I you, you should strong. break it. Canada is America. <laughs> it's North America. He got invited, but then they're like, "No, you're not American." Wait. <laughs> yeah, you. I get that. So in my day job, I have people I work with that report to me in Colombia, and they bring this up all the time. They're like, "We're America too. We're South America." No. Yeah. <laughs> no, they only wanted me there to break the world record, mm -hmm. not the American gotcha. record. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, for the record, my pick is Wes Claiborne. <laughs> Wes, yeah, he's looking really strong. I mean, a few, like, there's it one. Depend, it depends on his shoulder. Yeah. Because yeah. he's good at Viper pressing, but uh, I know. it depends how he's able to do his push press lately. Yeah, I think. Because um, Viper pressing is really cute and nice there because you look strong, but uh, 
you can only viper press till a certain amount of weight. As soon as you go to push press, it's completely different because uh, a viper press is on your it's all hip power. It's not a it's not a leg drive, right? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. The other the other person, I think Bobby has a good shot at breaking it as yeah. well. Bobby. Oh yeah, he's the one that I was listening yesterday when Big Low was and. He wants, I think, 485. Yeah, Bobby has a really good chance. He has it a all really good chance. If he's able to do the clean, he should be able to press it. Yeah. But uh, that's his weakness. But uh, we'll see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the current current it record is 476. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Current record's 476, is it? Yeah. Rob yeah. Kearney? Yeah. 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 I think Bobby's in the 470s in training already, so he's close. Yeah. Yeah, Look, interesting. Yeah, but at, at that point, every five pounds is a big ass difference, man. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I'll take. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. I'm nowhere near <laughs> that, so I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I another question I was wondering is, I mean, you both kind of compete open, but for people that compete within weight classes, since you do train other people, how important is it to get to the top of the weight class to maximize strength? Does it matter? Does it not really matter? What are your positions on that? Uh, I don't really believe in weight cut. Just get as strong as you can. And uh, if you're close to that weight cut, go ahead and do it. But it's not worth sacrificing for a weight cut to get the weight that you want, right? Unless you're just starting the sport. Because I'm sorry, but if you're over 231 and you're just starting the sport, it sucks to be you because uh, it's a really high number to start off with. Yeah, <laughs> That's what's great about having novice classes now. But, uh, yeah, just put, just, in, get strong. Just, just, just put in the work. Get to where you want to be and, and just take your time. Because uh, if you don't, I, the faster you get, the faster you get injured, basically. So, For sure. Uh, and we only have one body race, so enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was also wondering, have either of you ever been to a competition where there were misloads? And kind of, how did that go? No. No? Uh, I don't. Yes, but you don't really realize it when you're doing it, right? It happens at the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it happened at a at a show here in U.S. in January, and uh, you know there's some pros there. Travis was there, uh, Stan Carradine, Marcus Crowder, and so forth. And so uh, the deadlift was misloaded. Travis ended up getting an inadvertent PR. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the, it was a deadlift medley, so there was a nine inch deadlift, an eighteen, and then a car deadlift. And so the um, the nine inch was supposed to be 800 pounds and it was 879. So that ended wow. up being a, a PR for him. Miss Lloyd. But, but like at the end of the day, it's the same thing for everyone, right? I yeah. I, I remember we had a, a log ladder in Warwick a few years back and they, they, by accident, they put the fourth log where it was supposed to be the fifth log. So it was like lighter, like heavier. And then like the heaviest log was the third one instead of the fourth one. Mm -hmm. But like, it's the same thing for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so we've been talking a lot of really interesting stuff. I've learned kind of a, a ton from both of you. So why don't we start wrapping up? Talk about what's uh, exciting in your future. So I think we we, we talked about the uh, dumbbell record. Max, for you, you got Shaw and Worlds coming up. So um, anything else, any sponsors you'd like to talk about or anything you'd like to plug whatsoever, please feel free. Uh, just basically the COVID just stops so you can start going back to normal and actually do competition besides like crossing your finger to hold to be invited to shows. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we also, so during COVID, it was actually, we started a gym in our backyard, which was maybe like 10 by 10 feet. And now we have a, we went to a garage, but it was like, what, 1,500 square feet? Yeah. And now we're up to 3,000 square feet. Um, so we just can't wait for our grand opening here. We have an amazing facility. But, yes, again, we're sponsors. Still lockdown, yeah. We're still in lockdown, so we can't open it. But uh, we can't wait. Like, this wouldn't be the same without our sponsorships. Like, uh, all our sponsors have helped us helps, so yeah. much with either equipment or anything kind like of servers bells of steel was really good for us yeah and then now we have an amazing facility that hopefully athletes across the world will just want to come here and make it a destination for a few training sessions or even shows we have big shows that we want to host here so once things <laughs> start calming down we'll be able to do so yeah absolutely when you're ready to open it up let me know yeah, and i'll definitely course. help help you get the word out for sure of course thank you yeah, for sure. How, so the other thing kind of you brought up, uh, we were talking about sponsors. How do you go about getting sponsored? I always wonder, do they just reach out to you when you're a certain level of success or do you reach out to them? Well, it all depends, right? Because like eventually a sponsor, they, they, so 
whatever you put in is what they'll give you, right? Like if like if your social media is high, that's how they're gonna get like that's how they're gonna approach you. Yeah, that's how they're gonna get out of you. Like like if you're on like for example, if if you're big like uh, Robert Obers, for example, like he's sponsored by a Raycon and then like he gets paid that much because a lot of people like from Redcon views like a lot of people watch his YouTube so like mm-hmm. the Redcon logo sticks out so that's how like they get more and more people to buy Redcon because Robert is using it right yeah so it all right. depends, like that so like if if you're chasing a sponsorship you'll need to be do a lot more work than if a sponsor asks you to be part of the team right yep so that's how you go and like don't chase them because like you'll you'll just be an affiliate at the beginning use a code like get 15 percent off and like you'll get like whatever commission you get from your 15 percent off right so you, you you'll be making that you'll you'll be working for them basically for free and then you'll get like sample instead of getting a paycheck so like at the end of the day are you really sponsored you know, and then just take your time. Like, don't. That, 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 that's why at the beginning, I always want to try to get a sponsor. Like, a, like I don't want to send letters to like people. Like, like let's say I send a letter for a, a supplement company. Like, just just think about how many letters that they're getting, right? I think honestly, you just need to put in the work. Like, and if you are really worth it, they'll approach you. And I think that's how we got our sponsorships too. Like, we don't, we're not out there begging people. They're just they're seeing the work and in and out that we're putting in and they're they're about backing us up like we are so fortunate for belt for bells of steel and cerberus um they've been taking such good care of us but they also see that the work that we're putting in with their names um so it just kind of you know like it makes them look better or like it brings more people like we have like 50 members in our gym that all they wear now is Cerberus because like if Max and Sam are getting stronger wearing a triple ply belt, we're going to get the same one. Right. So yep. I think honestly, it just by being very genuine about you, what you're like, I will never, um, m- or advertise something that I'm truly not on board with. Like Absolutely. all the supplements that we're taking, like we're so upfront with everything that we put in our body or everything that we do wear as protective gear, um, that, yeah, that, that I think that's why people are like are willing to put up some sponsorship with us. So because we're really upfront, like if something's not working, and Bells of Steel is a perfect example for that. Like they're like, hey, can you guys try out the yoke? It's only it's only good for like what up to seven or eight hundred pounds, and Max is a thousand pound on it. And we really brought in our real feedback about the yoke and the bars and everything that they've uh, having or that they've sent out to us to try. So. Mm-hmm. I think it's just about being a genuine lifter. Get strong and people will notice, right? So do shows, finish good, and be that good at least. All great information. I want to thank you both again for coming on. This has been an awesome time. And uh, we do a live show Saturday nights. If you any of you ever want to you know, come on, promote anything, or just chit-chat a little bit on Strongman Highlights of the Week, reach out. You're welcome anytime. Perfect. Thank Thanks you. So Thanks for having us. All right. Awesome. Take care. You're welcome. Bye. So if you like this video and haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing using that button right there. And also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there. This one is the one that YouTube thinks that you will like the best. And this one is the one that I think you will like the best. As always, share this with everyone. And until next time, ciao, homie.